Welcome to the Luxury Leadership Talk, a new podcast and video cast in which I will meet luxury leaders in order to discuss topics that move and build this fascinating industry. My name is Michaela Merck and I've been working with and in this industry for over 20 years now. And I think now the time has come in order to really break the box open and share with you some of the secrets of this powerful sector. And in order to do so, I will meet remarkable leaders who shaped and influenced this industry over the past years. So for this very first episode, it's my pleasure and honor to invite somebody who literally breathes luxury leadership, who has luxury leadership in his blood, in his body, in his mind. Welcome, Stanislas de Kersiv. Welcome, Michaela. Welcome. Stanislas, um, I mean, you have a phenomenal career. Uh, you've been CEO of Cartier International, of Van Cliff and Arpels. Uh, you were heading as president Richmond Group France, uh, some other of the milestones. Um, president of Montblanc America, Montblanc France. And Montblanc France and a lot more. Tell me, when you look back to your career, which were the milestones that made you a successful leader and which were also the challenging moments in this career path? Well, the motto is over deliver. Over deliver every day. Over deliver in creativity, in manufacturing, in selling, in communication, in client experience, in creating team, team leading uh, and, and uh, team experience and mm -hmm. team spirit. It's very important. It's always to do better, always to surprise clients, mm -hmm. do better, uh, better than yesterday, less than tomorrow. Mm. Uh, there was a, a su successful uh, jury for, for lovers saying, you will always love more than yesterday, less than tomorrow. Same thing for luxury. You need always to surprise. Mm. And obviously, the challenges are the crises because there's regular crises, yeah. whether they're sanitary or economic crises. Mm -hmm. The good thing is luxury is always rebounding. Why? Because when there's sanitary crises, you, we are all experiencing the fact that we are mortal, something we usually we don't want to see. Mm -hmm. But if you are mortal, you're surviving. You say, I'm surviving. I'm alive. I want to express my love and friendship, starting with myself, for mm -hmm. example. But I want to express my love and friendship. I see that in Japan, where for the tsunami, there was a 40% increase in jury. And we asked question, and Japanese told us, look, the tsunami could be too today. So I, I, I'm survived. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with the COVID. We saw an incredible growth of, of, uh, of luxury after that. But also in economic crisis, when there's an economic crisis, luxury is a safe haven. Mm -hmm. So you're protecting, and I've seen that after the 2008 crisis, we had a fantastic high jury event at Van Cleef and Arpels. We invited clients from all over the world. It was a Sunday, we sold everything, a private view, mm -hmm. great dinner, Alain Ducasse, it was fabulous. And, uh, but on Monday, Lehman Brothers fall, uh, the stock market crashed by 30% and we say, oh, when we say we sold everything, but, you know, we just shook hands, you know, mm -hmm. we don't buy money on Sunday. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? What will be the cancellation rate? Mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 50% mm -hmm. after two months, cancellation rate zero. Wow. Because clients told us, look, I'm not so sure the, the, the finance system will survive. The stock market is minus 30%, but my love is still love. I am my uh, necklace, earring, bracelets um, uh, is, is still there, and uh, the diamonds, emerald, ruby, sapphire is not losing 30%. So, mm. so whatever happens, you re always rebounding higher and higher. So you, in leadership, when you experience all of these crises, what did you do in order to really help the teams to rebound as well with you and with the brand? Always read the experience. Always gather the team and say, what have we learned? Whatever happens, whether it's success and failure, <clears throat> we're learning something. What can we learn? And let's be sure that what we've learned, we recycle it into the procedure to be sure that we are you know, having more success and less failure. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to regularly, but you know, I was doing that every day, to read what I've done the, the, the day before, mm -hmm. the success, the failure, mm -hmm. with the, the COMEX, the CODIR, we've done that every month. Uh, it's very important to do that regularly, to read and examine and, and assess, analyze the success, the failure, and, and take lessons out of it. Amazing. Very important. The learning curve. Yes. Um, I mean, luxury loves strong stories. 
which is your favorite luxury story when you look at the legacy of maybe one of the brands that you were guiding? Yeah, you're right, Michael. It's very important to, to tell story because telling story is creating emotions. When we were kids, we loved to, to have our uh, parents telling us stories. Uh, now we love uh, Netflix. So, so, so t telling stories is important. Um, it, it creates emotions. And it's something when you give the gift, you can also tell the story. Mm -hmm. One of the um, one I love is, you know, you, you're wearing a, a Van Cleef and Apes Alhambra uh, <laughs> necklace. Yeah. And, and this is what I love because it's four leaf clovers. And the four leaf clovers, one means health, wealth, true love and luck. So it's always, it's not only beautiful, but it brings you luck. Mm. So that's what I love. I didn't know that you were choosing this story, but uh, I somehow felt today it needs to be with me. <laughs> Thank you, Stanislas. When we look at leadership, what would you say are the leadership qualities that allowed you to be a successful and also to drive the brands that we were managing to a high level of excellence? You mentioned excellence just before a couple of times. Um, uh, yeah, which are the leadership qualities which are really important? I think creating a team spirit, creating a strong team and creating a team spirit. Because mm -hmm. what's important in luxury is this is a team spirit, tutti fratelli. You need to have strong designer, but beautiful manufacturer, beautiful communication, beautiful selling, beautiful after sales service, beautiful client experience. So it's key to have a, the, the stronger team spirit between all the, 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 the talents, but also all the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not co co competition, it's co-conquering. We're all conquering the world. So it's, only, it's important to have team spirit within the group or within the industry with the Comité Colbert, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. The second one for me is transmission. Mm -hmm. Because those, those maisons have been created some, some 100 years ago. It's okay. important to transmit. Mm -hmm. It's important to transmit uh, from generation to generation, from country to country. Yes. So it, those are two, two vital experiences. Mm -hmm. So when, when I would say relational intelligence is one of the key uh, qualities that a leader needs to own in order to be successful, you would agree? Yes, and also what is vital is to help the world to move from a society of consumption to a yes. society of transmission. Yes. And from an ecosystem, me and myself, mm -hmm. to ecosystem, to, 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 to Tutti Fratelli. So two, two, two very mm -hmm. two vital moves, mm -hmm. consumption, transmission, yes. ecosystem, ecosystem. ecosystem. Mm. Big move. And this also somehow brings us to my next question. Uh, which is about the, 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 the definition of luxury. I mean, we have so many different definitions of luxury. What would you say is luxury today and how will it change tomorrow? Well, one of the great definitions of luxury was Jean-Louis Dumas, who said mm -hmm. Trans uh, luxury is what you repair. That's what he, he, he loved. His grandfather was saying that. Trans luxury is what you repair. I believe also luxury is what you transmit. Yes. Because one of the key reasons to buy luxury is love and friendship, mm -hmm. to express love and friendship. Mm -hmm. But luxury, you know, love and friendship, you repair, you transmit. It's vital. And now we live in a time where it's vital to be able to transmit not only luxury, but the whole world. Mm -hmm. We've got the you know, climate mm -hmm. change uh, challenge. And obviously today, uh, we've got the risk of two, New York under the water, Miami under the water, Bangladesh under the water with 100 million people that need to move. And today, each of the clients is saying to the brand or to the group or to the maison, what are you doing for the planet? It's not only the clients who are asking this question, mm -hmm. but also the employees, what are you doing for the planet? The investor, what are you doing for the planet? The distributor, what are you doing for the planet? The journalist, what are you doing for the planet? Mm -hmm. And the government, what are you doing for the planet? So it's vital to be sure that the luxury is able to prove that there's a sustainable uh, sustainable growth, sustainable mm -hmm. system. Mm. And I believe that the circular economy is a fabulous solution for the luxury world. Mm -hmm. uh, since you mentioned circular uh, economy, uh, let's talk a bit about uh, the young generation. Because the young generation, it's the future client of the luxury houses. And at the same time, when I also look at the students that I am teaching, I've been teaching, uh, they have a strong appetite for luxury. At the same time, they really want to consume things, objects, services that make sense. Um, 
what would you say are the important elements in order to maintain a high level of desirability for this young generation who is the, uh, the client of tomorrow of luxury? I think what is vital for me is pre-loved. The ability to go, to go from to, to transaction to a relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's very vital to say, look, I'm, I'm only selling to, not only selling to you, but also I'm being sure that I can repair and buy back. Mm -hmm. When I was president of, of Cartier in America, I went to see Tono, the, the, the number one wholesaler for watches. I mm -hmm. told them, what are the best seller? Told me, Rolex, pre-owned Cartier. I said, wow, pre-owned. And then I realized <laughs> that pre-owned, I call it pre-loved. Yes. It's true also for real estate, because wherever you live, it's an apartment uh, 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 where you work in an office, in a, in a, in a, in a boutique, in a restaurant, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a castle, in a chalet. You, you're not the first one, you're not the last one. Mm -hmm. So all the real estate is pre-loved. Mm -hmm. Also true for the car industry, mm -hmm. whether it's Fiat, Volkswagen, but also Tesla, Rolls-Royce, yeah. Porsche, Ferrari, Matra. Mm -hmm. They're already telling you, Michaela, I'm selling it to you, I'm repairing it, I'm buying back. Mm -hmm. Porsche, 30% of the turnover is pre-loved Porsche. So that's that type, mm. vital. And even you, you've been pre-loved. You've been pre-loved by your parents, grandparents, brother and sister before being loved by your husband and mm. your children. Mm. So, so it's vital. And uh, uh, when I was president of Van Cleef & Appels, I've realized uh, a program where we are buying back high-end jewelry mm -hmm. uh, from clients. It's a win-win-win. Yes. Win for the seller, say, thank you very much. I've got one necklace, two daughters. Win for the... We, you know, the golden hands in mm -hmm. the workshop saying, thank you very much. Look at the 1930 uh, necklace, fabulous, fabulous. And also what we need to create today mm -hmm. need to be fabulous in 150 years. Mm -hmm. And the buyer is saying it's authenticated and decarbonated. Yes. And now you've got Richard Mille doing it. Mm -hmm. You've got Vacheron Constantin doing it. So it's vital. It's going to major step forward for the luxury industry mm -hmm. to integrate that, especially yeah. because if you look at it strategically, all the luxury group, Maison and Brands, have grown by getting closer to the clients. We all started designer, mm -hmm. after that designer, wholesaler, mm -hmm. designer, wholesaler, retailer, mm -hmm. designer, wholesaler, retailer, e-tailer, e -tailer. designer, wholesaler, uh, designer, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, e-tailer, and now re-commerce. Re so we can do the re-commerce. Mm -hmm. So it's vital because you have a, a permanent, uh, especially so because today... It's like a wheel that is ongoing, yeah. actually. And yeah. also today, it's a major opportunity because 92% of jewelry are in safe. 95% mm. of watches are in safe. 98% of garments are in cupboards. So you've got an amazing opportunity yes. uh, to save the planet and also to integrate what is done uh, by, by, by uh, Christie's, Sotheby's, Vestia Collective, Collector Square, yes. and, and it's good for the planet. So it's like win-win for everybody in the end. Yes. So when I, when I hear you um, uh, answer my, my question, uh, I would say, uh, or you would say that for the young generation, in order to create the desirability in luxury, you must create pre-loved uh, services, right? Exactly. Mm. Because also you want to say that it's one way to say that the, the earth is pre-loved and you want mm -hmm. this earth to be here in, in, in 30, 50, 200 years and 50, 500 exactly. years. What we are lucky, Michael, is now today we live in a situation where David and Goliath are helping each other. Mm. In the history, David and Goliath are killing each other. But today, David and Goliath, are, so big groups and small startups are yes. working together. Yes. We've seen that in for the COVID. Sanofi, Goliath said, I didn't find the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And Moderna said, I found it. And they work together. Mm. Uh, the raise, it's a fund who creates a David and Goliath price every year. So where they reward uh, David and Goliath working together. Mm -hmm. Comité Colbert, which is, which is uh, the, the association of 100 of the top luxury maison group in France, uh, uh, cr led by uh, the very inspired uh, Benedict Epinay, mm -hmm. have created an inspiration booklet where they said, what are the solutions of this 99 maison uh, to solve the uh, priorities of United Nations? Mm -hmm. And she highlighted startups like Revalorem, mm -hmm. which is a great startup that demantle de de uh, manually uh, unsold items to mm -hmm. give back 90%, 80% or 70% of the raw material. And also Foam, which is a startup which is helping uh, to integrate second-hand vintage, pre-owned, pre-loved. Mm -hmm. And you've got a lot of startups. You've got Place to Swap, Foam, Reflant, Luxury Inside, which yeah. is a, the Bloomberg of data for luxury, mm -hmm. uh, Circular, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, clear fashion, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you, you, you restore it with uh, the far fetch of uh, far fetch of so, repair. So, so you would say that uh, it also impacts the way that luxury is organized, maybe, uh, so that the small startups collaborate with the big players, uh, that uh, groups, in order to be more sustainable, need to collaborate together. Maybe players who never work together in the yes, past. Yes, and is it's a win-win. Look, Marie-Claire Daveux, who is a very inspired uh, director of sustainability at Kering, mm -hmm. uh, wrote an article saying, she, at Kering, we're very proud mm -hmm. to work with 120 startups to help to find solutions wow. for the climate change. So that is, 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 is fabulous. It's fabulous. It's phenomenal. Great. So um, when we talk about sustainability, I mean, sustainability, when we look back five years ago, you could almost imagine it was very far away for many, many luxury houses. Some, yes, but uh, for the mainstream, let me say, um, they did not really place that at the heart of their company goals. Uh, with COVID, it was like a wake-up call. And uh, now most, I would not even say all, all of the luxury brands and houses somehow place sustainability at the core of their strategic goals. Um, uh, do you already have some examples where you would say luxury also here in sustainability is becoming a trendsetter? Oh yes, you know, there's, there's a pressure, as I mentioned, from clients, from employees, for shareholders, for journalists, for government. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a, 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 everybody, you know, all the brands are, are, are starting, I was mentioning um, uh, Richard Mille, you know, offering, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to buy pre-loved pre uh, Richard Mille. You've seen uh, Hermes who said that you know, we are going to do um, mushroom uh, handbags. Mm -hmm. Cartier did also that, that they're replacing uh, leather by, by Apple. So there's a lot of initiatives, yes. uh, a, a, a lot of initiatives to, 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 to help, mm -hmm. especially because we lived in a uh, sanitary pass. Yes. I think we're going to live soon with a climate pass. <laughs> so, so, you know, saying what is your carbon impact? Yeah. And, and the idea is to have a better impact uh, less impact a year after year yeah. to be able to prove that to your clients, employees, shareholders, mm. government. That is not just greenwashing no. and that it's real, that you can prove it and to be literally responsible yes. for, the, for, for maintaining our, our world, our earth. Yes. And, and, and I think more and more, you know, more and more, there's also improvement in education. Mm -hmm. I've created a circular economy chair at LESEC with L'Oréal mm -hmm. and Silo as sponsor. Mm -hmm. We've created the Fédération de la Mode Circulaire. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with Neoma to create a luxury and a fashion circular chair. Uh, and I know that L'Ecole Haute au Joerie de la, la Rue du Louvre is working with a club of circular jewelers. So everybody understands that we need to find together solutions yeah. to save the luxury yeah. brands. And you can't do it alone. No. So it's all about now collaborating. Tutti fratelli. Tutti fratelli. <laughs> um, luxury also loves to look ahead of time, always wants to be somehow first. And this requires, of course, to boost creativity, to boost innovation as well. What did you do as a leader in this, in this field for bringing creativity to a highest level within your teams, within your brands, within the houses that you were guiding? I've set up regular you know, working session about the dream, saying, what is our dream? So let's remove the constraints. Okay. Let's, let's just dream what we want to do for Van Cleef and Appels of a Cartier. Mm -hmm. And everybody was, you know, sharing their dreams. And it's, it's really helped to elevate what we want to achieve in terms of creativity, communication, client experience, retail experience, uh, e-commerce and everything. So mm -hmm. it's, it's good to say, look, let's always, you know, be ex because in terms of creativity, a dream is, is extremely creative. Exactly. So no barriers, no limits, just exactly. uh, wh whatever you feel. Let's make it eventually happen. Exactly. Um, so maybe we have uh, quite a lot of young people who are listening uh, to this podcast and video podcast and who would be interested to know as well, what are the, the qualities that I need to develop in order to be maybe successful if I want to enter one day this fascinating industry? What would you say are the talents that are very important to, to, to develop, to have in order to make a successful career in this industry? Add value. You need to add value to the maison, to the group. You need to add value to the team. And I think, you know, today, the two, two, two elements which are key is sustainability. Mm -hmm. So add value by being trained in sustainability. 
Second is for me is NFT metaverse mm -hmm. because there's also a new way to create emotions. Yes. Uh, NFT people say non fungible token. For me, it's new fabulous treasure <laughs> because it creates uh, 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 fabulous. And you know, you know, for example, uh, Origin is uh, using NFT. It's a startup based in, in Sweden uh, using NFT to to show. Uh, the uh, authenticity yes. and uh, of, of the, which is key because there's mm -hmm. a lot of counterfeiting in luxury mm -hmm. and also exclusively with using NFT and metaverse to create new emotions. So I think those are two things uh, and but a new junior need to say look I need to bring value I need to add value. Mm -hmm. Value, be it in the digital field, be it in the economical and also responsible field. So we have two, I think, key issues that we need to integrate if you want to bring something and add value to those beautiful maisons. Um, there's one last aspect, um, which I also see that all of the luxury houses are trying to yeah, live and implement as good as possible, which is client experience. They all want to create a memorable client experience when the client comes. They want to have the clients come back again to, to make them as loyal as possible. But how is this true? How, this can, how can this still be uh, achieved in a world that is fast moving, in a world that is becoming extremely complex, in the world where we all have my mobile phones, uh, it's digitalized? Uh, what would you say? How to create luxury, memorable luxury experience? It's tomorrow? vital. It's always, I think the best thing is to create a surprise, to, to be sure that you say, wow, surprise, mm -hmm. surprise. And you can do that either physically. Yes. Look at the new Dior boutique, Avenue Montaigne is absolutely fabulous. And there's a lot of investment in retail around the world. You need also to have events. You know, Messica is doing fabulous events of, of fashion, uh, fashion uh, uh, demonstration of jewelry. Uh, so it's, it's every year it's fabulous. Uh, you need also to have uh, e-commerce, NFT, metaverse. So, we, but you need always to say, I want to surprise you, mm -hmm. uh, because I want to 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 be sure that you, we start with the transaction. But I want to be sure that we got the relationship. Mm -hmm. I will always remember a dinner at High Jury where we did at the top of the Eiffel Tower with Alain Ducasse, top clients from all over the world, from Van Cleef and Arpels. At the end of the dinner, a young 25 years old American stand up and said. I would like to raise my glass of champagne to Van Cleef and Appels. I'm the third generation buyer. So that's what we're looking, third generation. So it's a client experience that moves from one generation to a generation. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's always important. So you need needs to be a goal saying how I'm, I'm sure that you will, you will have happiness, happiness. Uh, and even if your clients for, for you know, more than one year, 10 years, 20 years, you need to be always ah, surprised because there's a new retail development, a new product, a new communications. But I will always remember your first name, your birthday, uh, and, and always being sure that we got a strong relationship. Mm. And Stanislas, since you are mentioning this importance to transmit from generation to generation, there's a last question that comes into my mind. What do you do as a luxury leader in order to make sure that all this fascinating spirit is transmitted over generations so that it's not uh, yeah, an ending story, but a never ending story? Well, it's vital. You know, I, I was so proud to, to transmit Van Cleef and Apples to Nicola Bose, who is a fabulous uh, CEO. Uh, but are always very important to transmit to, 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 to transmit to a great team, a better team than what you, you are yourself, mm -hmm. always improving. Uh, it's important to, to, to be sure that you can train people. Yes. Uh, is, training is, is, is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, Shrev is a great, uh, Frederick Shrev will create Okta, which is a great training uh, uh, startups to help people in retail because you need always to improve and, re and learn from generation to generation. So it's vital to transmit, it's vital. So sharing, transmitting, training. Um, what is your, the accomplishment in your career you are the most proud of? Well, the transmission of Anclef and Appels mm -hmm. and the, to, to each of the brands, each of my job I transmit it to, to better person. And that's, I thought it was very important because those group, those maisons have been here for, for, uh, for hundreds of years, for some of them. Yes. Well, you, you're leading it for you know, years, but not hundreds of years. So it's important to, to prepare and to be sure that you're transmitting and yeah. with, with, with joy, happiness and, and pleasure. Stanislas, which are the key challenges and trends that you see for the coming years uh, that will significantly impact the luxury industry? Well, the, the main challenges will, will be the, 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 the need to have a circular economy mm -hmm. because we need to, to be sure that we've got a sustainable 
growth and that we will not have, you know, New York, Miami, Bangladesh, and other water, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely vital. And luxury should be an example, because if luxury is one way to express love and friendship, yes. if I love you, I want you to mm -hmm. be here in 20 years, and you know your children, children to be here in, in 100 years. So it's, it's, it's vital. It's yeah. vital to be an example that we've got something which makes sense for the world, uh, especially because, for example, some jewelry are here 500 years after the growth on some yeah. watches 200 years after their, 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 their creations. So it's, it's vital to be sure that this is the most sustainable you know, uh, industry in the world and it gives an example that can be used for all the other industries. Mm, and as soon as luxury is moving into a direction, usually others are following as well because they yes. see how important it yes. is. Yes. Thank you very much, Stanislas, for being my guest today for this very first episode of the Luxury Leadership Talk. If you like this discussion as much as I did, um, subscribe either to the videocast on YouTube, podcast on all the different podcast channels, uh, share it with whoever could benefit also from all those important messages that significant, remarkable leaders in this industry will share with you about this powerful industry and also an industry that is full of knowledge, excellence and desirability. Looking forward to welcoming you in our next episode. Thank you very much, Stanislas. Thank you, Mikael.